Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I want to start this talk off pretty quickly because it's a lightning talk and I don't really want to take too much time just yet. So uh, as I go back over the slides, uh, I want to introduce myself. Um, I've been using Rust since 2016. And at the same time, I picked up Vulkan. Actually, that's why I learned uh, Rust. But I've been doing graphics for like 30 years now. And that kind of scares me a bit too. Uh, but I've learned in this time that, you know, the community and sharing is really, really important. Uh, so recently I got really excited because of, you know, one of the projects I saw on open source. I took up some of the ideas and I combined them with some more. And I'd like to share with you today what you know, I'm working on, which is a graph rendering library. And, you know, every time we talk about graphs, we just did a moment ago and we're going to talk about them now. We're, we've all got different images in our heads. Uh, but with regards to rendering, um, and with Vulkan especially, which is the, the API that I'm targeting, I wanted to um, explain that rendering graphs are going to help, I believe, games automate some of the things that machines do. And in the case of Vulkan, we know there's so much weight with render passes and barriers and descriptors and pools of structures of all different types, you know, it just never ends with, with Vulkan. Uh, so I think when we formulate the problem as a graph, we can eliminate some of those troubles. And I think that's what Screen 13 is doing um, by allowing you to directly access images and buffers and shaders, just like as graphics programmers, we are thinking and trying to, you know, uh, formulate our problems, but previous APIs have limited us from expressing. And so that's the kind of graph, and I'll show you on the next slide a little bit more. This is just the, the bullet points. But of course, with every graph, like all the different systems that are out there today, we have to choose if we're doing it you know, offline or online. Uh, and that affects how much memory gets used, if it's something we can change, you know, if the graph can make modifications, or if it's uh, the case where a render graph can only have parts turned on or off. Um, so. Let me go to the next slide and show you a picture, uh, which may uh, kind of help illuminate some of the stuff that we were just talking about. Um, so a typical game might have a graph that takes a number of operations that we'll logically think about as you know, shader calls with inputs and outputs. And they all formulate together into usually some sort of post-processing that appears on the screen. So the, uh, the goal of screen 13, uh, when I created this library was to make this process that you're looking at on the screen just a little bit easier because uh, there's a lot of boilerplate with Vulkan. And so on the next slide, I've got a picture that shows you some of the GSL code, GLSL code. You might write uh, the shader code for screen 13. And this is just like any other engine where you, you know, write a shader and you put a bunch of images and buffers into it. And beneath that, I'm showing you a usage pattern with um, screen 13 that allows you to compose a graph. So this little section of code right here would be equivalent to one of those tiny blocks on the previous screen, such as convolving an image or doing a blur pass or something that might be related to some step of the rendering. Uh, this one here is a fur and lava shader, obviously. So uh, you can kind of see it's a pretty simple library as far as uh, the presentation, but it's also pretty basic, which is uh, very much where this presentation is at the moment. Um, I'm kind of looking for uh, community feedback on where to take the ideas in the library. And uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much the entirety of my lightning talk. So I guess I'm done. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing. Um, <clears throat> so we got a question in the chat, which was, what was the project that inspired you into making this library? Uh, so I guess the the first one, it was a, uh, a co-range uh, a long time ago, um, years ago, inspired me to get back into game development. And it was a C engine with OpenGL. And I'm like, that's really exciting. So I copied a lot of its ideas and put them into my words. And I got so far. And then I kind of lost the, the passion. I didn't know how to bring it to a game. And so I tried again with uh, the GFX HAL library. And I got pretty far. But I was doing kind of you know end user cases 
And uh, I didn't know how to make a solution out of that. And so if you saw the last graphics talk about um, the lessons learned from GFX HAL, uh, I think one of the ideas was to um, kind of uh, fit more to the API and the actual use case at hand. And so when I saw Kajia recently, which is the most amazing project in open source in my, my opinion right now, it just showed me um, how I could take a very fixed function library I had before and turn it into a dynamic graph-based library. And it's like, ah, I see the answer. So I took some of those ideas and I took a couple ideas from Granite, which is a C++ library. And I put them together and th this is the result. I feel like I just copied them from the internet, uh, but I'm so happy with the result. And that's where we are today. Cool. Um, I have I have a question myself, which is a little spicy, is how are you dealing with the unsafe problem? Are you, are you keeping the library safe or are you what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the problem is uh, using Vulkan, of course, everything is just a bunch of data that can blow your entire computer in half. And how do you do that? And it's easier, I found, on some in some parts of the API than others. Um, one of the troubles I had um, when I was just you know, writing raw Vulkan and making graphics applications and games outside of this project was getting render passes correct. And most of those issues you could find in the, uh, the validation layers. And so, you know, some of those places I decided not to put a lot of work into making safe inside of screen 13, because that's kind of like the responsibility of any graphics programmer to get right. But at the same time, uh, ray tracing is almost impossible to do anything at all without crashing the graphics card um, because you're passing raw pointers around by design. And in those areas, I cannot make it safe. It's almost impossible to do that. So I tried to split a, an even line where if you understand Vulkan and you found it to be difficult, this library helps you do it safely. Uh, it takes away the things that are most dangerous, um, barriers, synchronization, render passes, subpasses, descriptors, pools, and makes those things very, very safe to use. But of course, underneath there's unsafe code everywhere. Um, that, that's the nature of the beast. Of course. Um, you touched on this this next question, um, which do you support um, multiple subpasses? Yes. So that's logic that um, I kind of coded, kind of, but really copied from Granite. And I'm just, you know, it was a, a great piece of learning out there. And so I don't feel bad about doing that. It's open source. I feel great. But it's also kind of amazing because I could have never thought this up. Um, so the logic inside Granite allows for taking render passes that have compatible inputs and outputs and either preserving them through a subpass or joining them up and making them part of an actual subpass group. So you can uh, do all of that stuff, keep your rendering on tile. And to you, you're just defining individual blocks of like, hey, I need to blur a texture. And if it happens to, in the, the graph of things, work out that it turns into another image later and can be tra transient, um, that's something that you can just let happen, you know, so it's it's not something you have to actually program in. Cool. That sounds lovely. Um, thank you for sharing. And unless there's any last questions, I think we're ready for the next talk.